Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the recent discovery coming directly from Mars, the underground lake that you may have already heard about. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail that you may have not known about from the news or from other videos you may have watched and introduce this really really important discovery. Welcome to What The Math. So by now you should probably be aware that at some point this beautiful planet Mars was actually very very similar to Earth. Specifically about 4 billion years ago it was actually filled with lakes and water and oceans and a lot of volcanoes as well. That's actually the reason why it had so much liquid water on the surface. But at some point uh, basically it stopped being able to support all of this and the water disappeared. For the longest time, we speculated that there was a lot of water underneath the Martian surface. And um, as of 2018, July of 2018, we were able to discover at least one confirmed underground lake. Now, this actually came from the mission that you see on the screen right now. And this is actually the satellite from the European Space Agency known as Mars Express. And it has this really interesting device on it called Marsis. And using this really powerful radar that's somewhere on this satellite, I don't exactly know where it's located, uh, the scientists were able to penetrate the surface of Martian crust and essentially look underneath. And they detected a lot of reflection that usually, for you know, a radar specialist, suggests essentially water. Here's actually the cross section and the picture of what they discovered. And they saw a lot of these bright reflective spots uh, coming off this area that's um, very, very close to the southern pole of Mars. Now, all of this only suggested one thing, that there was a lot of water underneath the surface. And it could have been either a large underground lake or most likely uh, just a lot of ice particles that are uh, segregated across different layers of rock. It's not necessarily a lake per se, although it could be a lake, but it's definitely a lot of water, possibly ice form or uh, possibly liquid form. And considering this mission has actually been here for about 15 years, um, this is a big discovery for essentially this particular um, satellite, mostly because um, even though it's been sort of orbiting around Mars, and I'll show you this orbit, um, in a few seconds, uh, for a very, very long time, it hasn't really discovered that much. At least uh, not things that were groundbreaking. And a lot of this was based on speculation before. You can kind of see that it has a very interesting, um, quite elliptical polar orbit. And so if I accelerate time here, you'll see that it actually moves around Mars uh, in a very, very peculiar fashion. That's because uh, using the polar orbit, you can then scan the entire surface because as Mars spins this way, if you're orbiting in a polar orbit, you'll be able to pretty much see the entire surface. And so um, Mars Express uh, was able to discover this and it made the big news. And there's a really only one main reason for this. That's because we actually have something similar on Earth that was discovered a few years ago. And I'm of course talking about the infamous Lake Vostok from the Antarctic region uh, that we discovered, uh, I think it was in 2012, and this was a lake that's very, very deep underneath everything. It's a lake that's located on the actual crust of Antarctica, but underneath all of the ice. And it used to be a real lake, uh, something like several hundred million years ago, that eventually got covered by ice and is now basically sort of squished underneath all of this. Now, the interesting thing about Lake Vostok is that for the longest time, the scientific community speculated that uh, there is life in that lake. Now it hasn't really been confirmed just yet and this is where uh, most people kind of don't really realize that a lot of the talk about Lake Vostok and life in it is not certain yet. We haven't really discovered it. We found signs of life, we actually found uh, genetic material that possibly came from um, bacteria, uh, but it's also possible that it came from a an actual contamination that happened in the lake about uh, three years ago, uh, the Russian team that was driven into the lake accidentally spilled the uh, fluid that's responsible for drilling, and it may have come from the bacteria living in that fluid. So there's a bit of a speculation that maybe life actually wasn't from the lake. Nevertheless, there is a pretty high chance that life may have actually survived and is still living in the lake. And this is where we actually need to study the lake a little bit more for us to 
make speculations about life that actually might reside right here on Mars or underneath Mars. So, in other words, if we find life in the Lake Vostok, if we actually find bacteria that still exists there, there's a very, very high chance we'll find life also right here on Mars because the conditions on early Mars were very similar to conditions of early Earth. And the type of life that could potentially be discovered underneath the Martian surface is what we usually refer to on Earth as uh, psychrophiles. They are bacteria that often reside in ice. Uh, there's actually a lot of bacteria that lives inside ice and usually gets um, energy and also essentially life um, resources from the rock and or from the recycled material that circulates through the ice. There's a lot of ice in Antarctica that actually has tons and tons of bacteria in it, uh, so Antarctica is actually not as dead as most people imagine it to be. That suggests to us that right here on Mars, we might potentially discover something very, very similar, and that's why we need to actually go there and try to find uh, something that may live there. But before we go there, we definitely have to study Lake Vostok more. And the problem is that um, back in 2016, I believe, or 15, the Russian scientists who were studying Lake Vostok unfortunately actually ran out of money. The government stopped supporting them. And so the mission was abandoned. And so even today, we still don't really know if there's any life in this beautiful and mysterious lake, which is actually something like the sixth biggest lake on our planet. It's a humongous lake that's really huge. It's about like 200 kilometers long and there's a lot of fresh water inside there. But the genetic material that was actually recovered by the uh, scientists who were studying it before uh, they ran out of funds uh, suggested that the bacteria actually had genetic material in it that was quite similar to um, various bacteria that actually live inside our gut um, that over time adapted to live inside people or um, other organisms. So there is still a chance that there is actually something unique and unusual that lives in Lake Vostok, which could also then be found on Mars. So there's actually a lot of parallels between these two lakes. Now, Martian Lake is a lot smaller. It's significantly smaller than the one uh, on um, in Antarctica. But nevertheless, it actually gives us a really good reason to now go to Mars and try to discover if we can maybe find life there that could potentially even be similar to the one on Earth. And that would create a lot of new questions uh, for the entire scientific community. And well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this particular video. Uh, I'm sure we'll discover more things that I'm going to mention in some of the future videos. For now, though, that's really all we know. And if you want to discover more about this particular study, the paper for this uh, particular study is actually available online. And I believe the principal investigator is uh, Alberto Orosei, an Italian scientist that studied uh, Mars for a really long time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and share this video with someone who loves Mars and wants to discover Martian mysteries and possibly learn a little bit more science in the process. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And before you ask, yes, I got a haircut. Uh, not the best haircut in the world, but I'm going to have to live with it for the next few weeks.